representation or whatever the formula or label for it is, it, it is uh, going to result in a fracturing of the party system. Uh, what will happen, uh, my fear is, and, and you have to sort of uh, look at this from the point of view of um, uh, your biggest fears. So, uh, so let's suppose that uh, um, your biggest uh, fear is that um, all environmental laws will be abolished. Okay, um, and uh, somewhere in Alberta, uh, three members of parliament are elected uh, with the policy of abolishing all environmental laws. Okay. Mm -hmm. Extremist groups uh, gain greater leverage in a fractured parliament mm -hmm. than they do in a party system right. parliament. Now, there are ways that you can try to ameliorate that, uh, but the risk of it, in my mind, is uh, great enough, uh, and the opportunity to uh, uh, heal the party system is still sufficiently existent. Uh, that I wouldn't trade off the opportunity to heal the party system against the risk of fracturing Parliament. Proportional representation is party system friendly. It, it, it will heal the party system because the proportional views of Canada voters as a large, as a, as a whole, uh, tends to be fairly consistent. So instead of having elections where one party has um, 200 seats in Parliament uh, one election and only two seats in Parliament the next election has happened in the 93 um, federal election. Parties tend to be a lot more stable because they're being elected proportionally across the country. So you end up having a stronger party system with more consistent parties from election to election. So whatever views are being held by a particular party aren't suddenly going to be ripped away by the next election when that party is, is decimated in Parliament. Well, I understand your point, Stephen, and it is um, an issue that um, uh, adversaries of proportional representation raise, and that is this fracturing um, of, uh, of the party system and of parliament and is allowing for small radical parties, which are actually don't really represent that many people, to arise and be disruptive of the parliamentary process. What we know is that that doesn't actually happen, and we know that because 81 countries around the world use a form of proportional representation in the uh, system that was recommended by the Law Commission there is a threshold established which would be in the Canadian context four to six percent and if you look at voting habits in Canada um, that would really um, undermine the rise of these Fractions, these fractional parties. What we know, what we know in looking at the German model or the, uh, you know, the Scottish experience or the New Zealand experience. Or Israel. Or no, no, see, no, that's no, that's yeah, exactly yeah, no. where we won't go with this. Yeah. And I will say to you, absolutely, no one is suggesting that Canada adopt a hundred percent pure proportional representation. That is the Israeli experience. It was what they were doing in Italy. And in Italy in the early 90s, they reformed their electoral system to establish that threshold. And I will just say though, Stephen, since World War II, so we're looking at about a 65 year period, even though Italy did have 100% proportional representation, they had something like 17 elections and we've had something like 21. So even though they had 100% proportional representation, we still had more elections than they did. But we are not recommending 100% proportional recognition. No one is for that very reason. But if you establish that threshold, yeah. uh, those small fractional parties will not arise, will all, not be disrupted. All the countries that have those proportional systems have a threshold. Have a threshold. Uh, three, With five the exception of Israel. Yeah. Well, but they, sorry, uh, proportional uh, mixed systems, uh, New Zealand, Scotland, Germany, they all have thresholds. At least five percent. Yeah. 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 So and it, it, it undermines yeah. that threat. It so it so let me yes. respond by saying that uh, this is interesting because it's really something I've only uh, in the last uh, few years become aware of. Um, and that is that um, everybody attaches uh, different importance to different issues. Um, it's, it's necessary to, in order for me or for you to succeed on any issue, 
it's necessary for us not only to be right, to establish that our point of view is important. <clears throat> so, in a case like this, for example, uh, if I thought that um, it was uh, sufficiently important, as you do, uh, I might uh, devote a greater part of my time and resources uh, to uh, investigating and looking into it and uh, making proposals. Um, the decision that I've made is that it's more important to um, reform our existing system than it is to make uh, such a major, um, if I may say, revolutionary change. Uh, I'm more of a reformer than a revolutionary, if I can put it that way.